are so much blessed that our spiritual father is here. We are in yet the actual time that we are getting from the Lord. Um, sometimes I'm out of words. The one whom we are to welcome was the father of our Bishop Stephen Semphoma. Ate yafuka tata wangu omoyo And he yet became my spiritual father Nakulumu One day Yali ayimiride wanonga ayogera He was standing right here speaking Nali into dao I was seated right there Na bishop agenze And bishop had gone that day I had a lot of questions of who is going to be my father. But, but on that very day, many fathers came to speak to us. As he started to speak. My heart so much melted and I cried a lot. And I received an answer that that is going to be a spiritual God. I didn't tell him immediately. But God gave, gave us an opportunity to meet us to meet again. For the time I've been sitting with him, he has so much blessed me. But way back, Bishop had introduced him to us as the pastor's team. And he was so much doing us good. I know he has gone through a number of temptations. But we thank the Lord for the grace he has given him. And we feel so much warm to be a father. Let us add God a mighty hand clap. Without wasting any other time, together with me, let's welcome Apostle Dr. John Mulinde. Apostle Dr. John Mulinde. Ajay. To come with his interpreter. Hallelujah. Let us give a mighty hand clap to Jesus.
And you prepared them as your will is. Father, we worship you. We request, O oh God, that you welcome our congregation and you meet our souls and you meet our life. That when we leave this place, that we may have a clear direction and the energy to do your will. Glory and honor back to you. Yes, you come out. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated in his presence. I thank the Lord for this moment. This is my first time to return to this place. Ever since my friend, my spiritual son, my fellow servant in the Lord, the Lord called him. We thank the Lord for the gift of his life unto us. We want to appreciate the Lord who has comforted and supported Pastor Fever. When you're clapping, clap unto the Lord. I want to appreciate the Lord for Dr. Selmaga together with his entire team. Amen. And the way they have moved in this transition season. You may not be aware, but many pastors have been praying for UCC so that it may transit in this period. Mawaso, I want to thank you, you the believer who has stood faithful to this ministry up to this time. I thank God for being here with some of my family. 
I have this young man here called Lara. Just stand up. He's my grandson. He's His mother got married in New York last year. Next is Abraham Mulinde. Abraham Mulinde. He is the one after whom Gideon came. Oyo Gideon Next is uh, John Lincoln Mulinde. John Lincoln Mulinde. And uh, he is the man pursuing all kinds of fantasies. He wanted to become a spaceman. <laughs> okay, take your seat. Again, I want to say thank you for being here and thank you for welcoming us. I also thank God for this book. I read through it before it came out. And I can say it's one of the few books that address a very rare subject. The subject of humility is a rare one. It's not normally talked about. And it's not normally preached even in conferences. Possibly because many people do not even understand it. Or many people do not walk in it. But uh, I trust that the Lord has ministered to you from different angles through the different speakers. And I have on my heart to share with you from a, a very, very different angle. Many times when we talk about humility, we think of a person who is quiet, who doesn't shout at others, who doesn't do things arrogantly, who doesn't act with pride and haughtiness, a person who is usually easy to miss in action. Mm -hmm. It is not easy to recognize them when something is going on. That is what we normally think about when we, t when we think humility. Personally, I would say nothing is further away from the truth. The Bible says Bible Moses Musa. was the most humble person, the meekest person ever lived. Yet Moses was not any of those myopic things we've just mentioned. He was not timid. He could be tough. He could be very persistent and insistent. And he is one of the greatest leaders in human history. He's the only prophet who said to Israel, God will send you another prophet like me. 
And he was talking of Jesus Christ. So what exactly do we mean by humility? Humility is not weakness. Humility is not hypocrisy. Have you ever heard of people talk about false humility? In Luganda we call it Katula Kebisevoka. In Luganda we say that. Meaning a person covers himself with a, 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 an outward look. But it, deep inside, he is his fire. And when you come to get to know him or her, you don't want to get to be near them. Jesus was a man of humility. Great, great humility. Yet you could not call Jesus weak. You could not call him timid. He was bold. He spoke truth straight. He challenged the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He challenged Herod. He was not intimidated. And yet he was a man of humility. So I ask you a question. What is your understanding of humility? Most people do not see the connection between humility before God and humility before people. And most people do not realize it's only as you gain in humility before God that you exhibit humility before people. Without trying, it comes naturally. And people will say, but that woman is a humble woman. Not because you've told them. Not because you've done certain things that are associated with humility. But humility is a character. Humility is a nature. And humility is a spirit. Ask your neighbor. Do you want to continue this journey? Do you want us to continue this conversation? So let me ask you to go with me to the book of 2 Chronicles verse chapter 7 chapter, and, and verse 14. This is a very common scripture. We normally talk about it, especially in intercessory circles. It says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Hey, humility is not just about being that nice guy that everybody wants or likes. Humility is part of the conditionality that God lays down for him to come down, visit a nation, heal the land, and revive the people. 
Katonda bwate kawo nti bwe munakola bino nze ngenda kujja wansi mberenga mbaonya atera nensi so, ya mwenga njunya So is not a cheap or product Obweto waze si chintu echo muendo mutono It has power Chirina amanyi It can cause God to move it can bring about a visitation from God. It can bring about the healing of the land. So when God says, I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land, we all want to see these things happen. We want to see a visitation of God. So we, let us go back and say, what are the conditions God requires? He says, if my people I thank you so much for the way you've interpreted. Because many times we read it as but the word is if. Which are called by my name will humble themselves. It's almost like wishful thinking. He's desiring it. Yenga te but it is very rare to be seen. For people to humble themselves. It is not very common. And the Lord said, I wish my people, those who are called after my name, they should humble themselves. And they pray. And seek my face. And forsake their evil ways. I'll come from heaven. I'll hear their prayers. I forgive their sins. I'll come down and heal their land. Wow. Shouldn't we go back and say, Lord, why don't we see more and more the fulfillment of these conditions? Now that we are talking about humility, let us zero down on that first condition. And I want to say to you, brother and sister, I may not know you personally, personally or intimately. I may not know where you come from and what you go through. But I want you to listen intently and ask yourself a question. Is this a word the Lord would send to me? Is this a word the Lord would send to me? Is this a word the Lord would send to me? Can the Lord tell me, I wish you would humble yourself? But I am so humble, Lord. I greet the people. I don't shout. Those who do me bad, I keep quiet. I don't talk too much. I am a humble person. Even if you ask my neighbors, they will tell you that I am a humble person. But when the Lord is saying, I wish you should humble yourself. And you pray while you have humbled yourself. And seek after my face. And you also forsake your evil ways. I assure you of right answers. Now let us ask ourselves. The Lord has made his meditation and he has seen that we are all not humble. 
That is where he has begun from. If my people Singa who are bande, called by my name humble yande, themselves, beto waza. then Awon pray then seek my face then forsake their wicked ways so the first conclusion we get here according to him we are starting from a position of lack of humility to have we agreed by the way one of the signs of lack of humility is when you are in a bad state and God says, look at you and you begin to make excuses. You begin to plead and say, no, 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 no. You know, I was doing... And God says, hey. Humble yourself. Adam, Adam. Adam, Adam. Where are you? I heard you coming. And I hid. Because I was naked. Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the fruit? That I spoke and commanded you not to eat? Do you hear the tone of God's voice? I, your creator, I commanded you. Have you broken that? Have you done your own thing? Sometimes we think only of the factual meaning. Have you eaten the fruit? But God is putting the emphasis elsewhere. Have you eaten of the fruit that I spoke and commanded you? I commanded you and you have eaten and Adam says, it's the woman you gave me. Is that humility? No, I'm not wrong. I've done nothing wrong. It's the woman you gave to me. This is not about meekness, speaking gently and quietly. This is about the heart. Someone not admitting something that is wrong or something that went wrong. Speaking good about evil. Not having a broken heart. No, the woman you gave me. Woman, what have you done? No, 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 no Lord. It's the snake. The serpents. Did those excuses help any of them? No. Most of us don't know the opposite of humility is pride. The essence of pride is never to look bad. Not to be looking bad. You want to look good. You want to look acceptable. You want to look right. So if someone says, but you were wrong here. No, 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 no. What I really meant. Oh, we are we plead like that. We are not humbling ourselves. We are acting proud. Readiness. We are not ready to look in a wrong way. Or to, to be uh, justified as wrong. That is pride. 
from another angle that many people do not usually look at. I told you I'm going to talk about humility from another angle which many people do not mention. Now, uh, permit me to take you on a journey. I'm going to paint a picture before you. And perhaps by that picture you will begin to see what exactly I'm trying, I'm laboring to bring forth. Go with me to the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 22. Ezekiel chapter 22. Verse 30. In verse 30 the Lord says. In verse 30 so I sought for a man among them who would make up a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land. That I should not destroy it. But I found none. I I sought for a man, just one man. One from among I them. Who would stand between me and them and purge the gap that was made between me when and them? That I would not pour out my wrath upon the earth. But I did not find even one. I did not find even one. Edda, Long ago, I struggled so much with that scripture. And I said, what? You only sought for one intercessor in the whole nation of Israel and you did not find any. Was there any time in the whole of Israel when there was no one who is praying for the nation? But you read properly. What God was looking for is not an intercessor. Uh -uh. He was looking for a certain quality of man. One who is capable of repairing the separation between God and man. One who is capable of standing acceptably before God and pray on behalf of the land. And he found none. Maybe there were many, many, many people praying. But a man with those qualities of heart. He didn't find any. I know it is perplexing. Let us go back to the beginning of that chapter. I want to show you something. In the beginning of this chapter, God is talking to prophet Ezekiel and says, son of man, go and talk to the city of Jerusalem and prophesy to it. Speak to the land. Now, watch the things. You see, sometimes we read and we don't take the details.
life. When God does not want to talk to the people anymore. And he stayed to talk to the land. Say to the land. In you. Not the people. In you, the land of Jerusalem, these things are going on. In other words, God is bypassing the people of Jerusalem and is talking to the land of Israel. Of Jerusalem. In you, they have done this. Who? The people of Jerusalem. They have done this to you. They have defiled you. That is why judgment is coming to you. Are you with me? When God reaches that point, the people of that land are in trouble. Let us listen to some of the things God says to Jerusalem. Verse 2. Now, son of man, will you judge, will you judge the bloody city? Yes, show her all her abominations. Thank you. Then say to the city, Thus says the Lord God, The city sheds blood in her own midst. That her time may come. And she makes idols within herself to defile herself. You have become guilty by the blood which you have shed. You have defiled yourself with idols which you have made. You have caused your days to draw near. And you have come to the end of your years. Therefore, I have made a reproach of you to the nations. And a mockery to all countries. Those near and those far from you will mock you as infamous and full of tumult. Have you ever been there and someone curses you and says you're going to see sorrow, but inside you, you're asking yourself, what have I done? So God begins to tell Jerusalem what it has done. Listen. Look. The princes of Israel, each one has used his power to shed blood in you. When God talks about princes, kings, rulers, He's talking about politicians. People who are leaders of society. And this time he mentions bloodshed. But it could be something else. It could be corruption. It could be persecution of people. He says, look at the politicians in your land. And how they misuse their power. To shed blood. To oppress the people. So that is one situation which is in the city of Jerusalem. Number two. In you they have made light of father and mother. 
Mugwe mweba mweba nyome ranga chitawe ne nyawe. In other words, Mungeri endala. Baigiri zaba no kunyoma bazadeba abwe. They have taught the children to despise their parents. Baigiri zaba no buta baba ulize. They have taught the children not to be humble. Mutivuga cho. In your in you that city. Mugwe chiba yoyo bakola. In you that is what they are doing. Next. Echidako. In you midst. They have oppressed the stranger. And in you they have mistreated the fatherless and the widow. Mumakatigo Bakolere Bakole Langamu Omugeni Okujoga Era Nebaliaza Manya Namwandu no Yatalina Chitawe. Banyaga Abanaku. They have robbed from the Abatalina Kayo Gerida. Those who have no one to talk for them. Those who are with Banamuandu. orphans and widows. Naba tambuze oba and the strangers. <coughs> Wali wo injustice in the land. Wali wo obuta obuta ba bwe nkanya mugwe. Wali wo okunyigiriza. There is suppression in the land. Area ba na kunaba. And to the, the the poor and those who are needed. Verse eight. You have despised my holy things and profaned my Sabbath. Verse 9. In you, men who slander to cause bloodshed, in you are men who slander to cause bloodshed, in you are those who eat on the mountain, in your midst, they commit lewdness. Abasajja bawa iriza baba nga mugwe okui wa musai. Ne mugwe mweba, mweba aliranga kunsozi. Wakati mugwe mweba kola ebi obu kaba. Okusamira kunsozi. Praying from the mountains. Oktua okuzikiriza manyagaba ntu urebi gambe bitalibi tufu. Destroying people's names because of false accusations. Verse 10. Olinyore kumi. In you. Men uncover their father's nakedness. In you they violate women who are set apart during their impurity. Let us use one word that it, there is fornication. To the level that someone can sleep with their father's wife. And also sleeping with a woman when they are in their period. I want you to imagine a, a, a land that has all those habits. I'm going to show you how the people of that land look like. Verse 11. One commits abomination with, with his neighbor's wife. Another lewdly defiles his daughter-in-law. Another in you violates his sister, his father's daughter. Era waliwo no mulala mugwe e ya kwata mwanyina muwala wa chitawe obo nabwe nzina bukaba obuli munsi mu kibuga echo Jerusalem All that is sexual immorality that is happening Naye, in that land Banya babikola But who is doing that Bantu ba mu kibuga The people in the city Kasoka to yongere yundi okankomonyo nyole Let us go ahead then I will explain Verse 12 in you they take bribes to shed blood. You take usury and increase. You have made profit from your neighbors by extortion and you have forgotten me, says the Lord God. We know all that in our society. People steal from each other. They take corruption. They suppress their friends with the, with the prices that are not of justice. 
The Lord is considering all this that has made Jerusalem to be in the state where it is. Behold, verse 13. I beat my fists at the dishonest profit which you have made and at the bloodshed which, you are, you, which has been in your midst. The Lord is considering this society. And he is saying, I don't have any other thing else, but I'm going to punish you and I'm going to destroy you. This is what is happening among you. Look at how you're stealing from each other. You see the injustice that is amidst you. Let us go to verses 23. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, say to her, you are a land that is not cleansed or rained on in the day of indignation. The, the conspiracy of her prophets in her midst is like a roaring lion tearing the prey. They have devoured my people. They have taken treasures and precious things. They have made many widows in her midst. Her priests have violated my law. And profaned my holy things. They have not distinguished between holy and unholy. They have made known that they have made known the difference between the clean and the unclean. They have hidden their eyes from my Sabbaths so that I'm profaned among them. Her princes in her midst are like wolves tearing the prey to shed blood, to destroy people and to get this honest gain. Her prophets plastered them with untempered mortar. Seeing false visions and divining lies for them. Saying, thus says the Lord God when the Lord has not spoken. The people of the land have used oppression and committed robbery. They mistreated the poor and the needy. And they wrongfully oppress the stranger. So, I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land. That I should not destroy it. But I found none. Now, please give me your attention. All those things we have read are happening in the same city. We can divide the people of that city into two types. The oppressors, the thieves, the corrupt, the land grabbers, 
those who do evil against the rest. And the second group, the oppressed, the abused, the ones against whom injustice has been done. Now listen to this. The oppressors deep inside they know that they are sinning against God. Deep inside they know it's not right. And if by chance any of them is sick and they think they are going to die they will pray to God and say Lord forgive me forgive me for the things I've done against your people forgive me for the land I've stolen the people I oppressed Deep inside, they know it's wrong. So there is a chance that if anything happens, they will repent. The second group, the oppressed, are different. They are wounded. They have suffered injustice. When a person gets wounded, whether you have stolen from them, beaten them unjustly, raped their children, anything wrong, and they are weak, they can't come back against you. They keep quiet. They cover it. But deep inside, there is a deep wound. There is a deep bottled anger. There is a sense of injustice. But because the injustice was not addressed, there is also another sense which says things like this. As I was offended like this, I will also do the same to another. Let them also feel it. As we are also feeling it, we begin to look at wrong things as justifiable. Justifiable. Why? I was also offended in the same way. When I was offended in the same way, who did anything? And those mindsets which think like that become normal to us. When we hear something wrong has happened in society, okay. mm -hmm. is he the first? We have already seen many. Are you with me? You're so quiet as though you're not here. What I believe is that everyone is understanding what I'm talking about. From ignorance. We adapt those thoughts as our thoughts. We begin to act like we don't care. We begin to see wrong as right. We begin to see bad as good. Have you ever heard the Molokole say? Have you ever heard Omlokolenga Agamba? Even if it is what? 
I will never forgive that man. And he said, but what if the Lord wants you to forgive? Mm -mm. Even God understands. That one I will never forgive. Have you ever had people like that? They have suffered, suffered pain, woundedness, injustice, and they feel it's so painful they are never going to forgive. But let me ask, ask you a question. Is that person walking in the ways of God? Or in his wicked ways. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray seek my face and forsake their wicked ways. Do you know how we come and spend that, the night in the prayer? And you go back and look at your neighbor. And you jeer them with a long jeer. And you don't even greet them and then you pass by them. When the heavens are saying, look at their wicked ways. But you slept in an overnight prayer. But when they tell you, you ask, do you know where I have gone through? That spirit you get at you. The spirit that says that. The spirit of self-righteousness. If the Lord is saying something, let him say, but from this point, is that humility? That is what the Lord is saying, if my people humble themselves. You go before the Lord and prostrate before the Lord and the Lord tells you, forgive that person. And then you say, oh God, he has hurt me so hard. Let them be, I will also be. And the Lord says, no. Your spirit is bound. And let go. Forgive and release them. No, you even shed tears. No, and you say, oh no God. Can I, can I Let them also suffer. And the Lord says, you're bounding yourself. Until you say, oh Lord. Let your will be done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you say, oh Lord, I'm humbling myself. I am ready to forgive. But give me the strength to forgive. That is what is referred to as humility. Humbling yourself. Yes, Katunda Kwagant singa. When the Lord says, if, if my people humble themselves, why? Why? Because we are already found with thoughts of pain, thoughts of wrath, wrath thoughts of, of, of bad pain. Some are against the politicians. Some are against our husbands. One day I was very much blessed. I went on one of the channels on TV. I saw Pastor Tom Mugera. The whole program was testimony. 
There was a, a long fasting for ladies. And he had been teaching them to let go. Come back to God's word. And I had one lady testifying. And that when Pastor Tom taught, and in my heart there was a, a bell ringing I cannot, I cannot, I will not do it the man has mocked me so much one day um, uh, the man came back like at 4 a.m. and the woman was quarreling with the man when she was inside and the man was outside and she said I will not open the door for you Go back to where you're coming from. And the man said, uh, He said, Okay, may you tighten the door. See you in the morning. I'll see you in the morning. And he went back to where he was coming from. And he came back in the morning. And the woman was like quarreling, and the man said, Didn't you tell me that you, uh, I should go back? And from then, he would come back in the morning. He would ask, where are you coming from? Denver. There, where I am coming from. Denver. That is where I am coming from. And the woman felt like he, she was being consumed. And then she stopped cooking for him. She would just leave everything there. there. Prepared. And the woman, the man would come back when there is nothing prepared so he, for him. So he now began coming back after eating somewhere. And so the man came back after eating also. You see that situation. Eva from bad to worse. It is coming from bad to worse. And so the woman reached Taleb and said, Let me try these things that Pastor Na Tom is saba teaching. Na she prayed and fasted Na we. and forgave the husband. Mami wa sa wa meka. When the man would come back at Nga any time, jana she would welcome him Na kamwenyo mwenyo. with a smile Na mutikula. and would get the things from him Na mgamba, Daddy, amazina, and would tell him that I have put my water in your water. Kan teke chigulo, kan as, teke wano. as you're bathing, let me prepare for you food. After doing all that and the man would go and sleep, she would cry. And she would say, Lord, you are seeing me when I am suffering like long this. Story short, to cut the long story short, because of humility, tell your neighbor she humbled herself. This, this man changed he would come back early. He would stay home in the evening. And he would bring a gift after a gift. Until one time when the man asked, What happened to you? You have changed. I did so many, much folly to you, but you no longer get angry. Now I don't have any other women that I love. I love you only. I request that you go to your, uh, to your parents that we may visit. And the woman said, We went and also did the introduction. We made the wedding. Now he is building. Say together with me. If my people, which are called by my name, should humble themselves and pray and seek my face and forsake their wicked ways. 
Don't you know that the, don't you think this woman had also her wicked ways? Which caused the man to say to hell? You see the wickedness of another person but you don't see your own wickedness. Until you begin to humble yourself. Program I watched the program until the end. And another woman said, My husband comes with another woman. And he would tell me, Excuse me, lady, can you go the other side that we may use the bed? And the woman spoke how she was very angry and she said at one moment I wanted Nae, to get hot water pour on them. But when she recalled the teachings of Pastor Tom and she, she, the, the teaching would say to her leave the flesh. Go back to the word of God. And rejoice in the word of God. Do not permit the devil to challenge you. Tell the devil whatever you are doing I'm a winner in the word. And she said that in the morning she would prepare water for bathing for two people. And she would prepare tea with the accompaniments and they would sit. When you hear those things, and, and some here are also saying, Me, me to do that. Before I burn them, you are a born again, but inside of you, you're saying, How can I not burn them with water? The answer is, Please humble yourself. Humble yourself. Accept that the Creator is all able. And the woman said, I went on humbling myself. I cried, but I did good. And she said that a time came. A, the man, the husband came back. And he stopped his ways. And afterward he said, how do you see? Can we visit the parents? And afterwards they wedded. The woman has four kids at home. That one may not expect to be wedded again. But she was wedded. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and depart from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. And the Lord said, I will forgive your sins. Even your wicked ways that you did challenging, I will forgive you. And I will come. And I will heal your life. I will heal your, your business. I will heal your business. I will heal everything around you. Now one way to today. Even where we are While sitting. Are struggling in the there are people who are struggling with the situation. They have prayed. They have fasted. But the situation has not moved. Because the Lord is still saying, I am seeking after man who can stand before me. My brother, my sister who is here today, today you, can't you have a second thought? And you say, but because of the Lord, let me humble myself. Let me forgive. Let me do what is worthy before the Lord. 
When I was preparing this message, one person came on my heart. They did a lot of evil to me. At a time which was very delicate. And I felt so sorrowful in me. When we were uh, bidding farewell to them and other pastors and elders, in my prayer to them as I laid my hands upon them together with the wife, I said, O oh Lord, I know the ministry of this man. I pray for them. You go with him when he, where he's going. May you pay him all that he has done. All the good that he has done. And in everything that he has done, please pay them as they have done. And in, as though in my heart I was saying that as he has done all this folly against me, let him get someone else to do the same folly. I am born again. But inside of me, I am very bitter. And that bitterness I have not shown to anyone outside. And the person who listens to the prayer would think I have blessed the man. But many, many years later, I decided I'll not do anything wrong or anything painful, anything bad against this man. I even decided that area where he is, I'm not going to go back there. I will leave it to him. Mirundi mingi. So many times the word may come the word for, for, to forgive word to, to work to relate with others but when that gospel would come all the things that I was thinking I would let them go and I say Lord I am leaving also that let another person do that not in wrath plotting anything wrong with him. Bible But one time as I was reading my Bible, Romans chapter 12. The Bible says to Musas, don't pay evil for evil. But you leave the vengeance to me. Immediately. I said, I'm leaving that. I'm not going to that direction. That thing came back even the third time in the same situation. And I asked, I, I kept quiet and asked myself, what is going on in my life? When I looked keenly, I had pain. I had disappointment. I think nobody has ever hurt me in that area like that guy did. But I was not handling it God's way. I was handling it in my wicked way. I would justify myself. Yeah, I did not do anything against him. 
mugambe nkusonyi nkusonyi de dala and i felt it in my heart that let me go and tell this man i have forgiven you i have give, forgiven you for real and the holy spirit told me to see byo ngoso byo gira masoga mukama ngate biri mu bukusa until you can say all that before the lord without any hypocrisy nebono bimugamba ye even if you tell him to that it will not change any situation aboluganda friends o kuita mu chintu echo kuso kucheya mbla kono chikasuka wali to go through that and undress yourself of that and you throw it away chigwana bweto waze it requires humility no gamo kama and you say lord amazima bompa choice sikola chintu echo chongamba if you give me a chance i cannot do what you're saying but you have not given me a choice you have commanded me i am being obedient i am humbling myself let your will be done let me give you something last whenever you go before the lord and he deals with you in such things biruma they hurt sometimes you feel like saying oh god i surrendering me i have been hurt the other time but also today na ye but when you overcome and throw it away peace comes joy comes victory comes now listen when you go tomorrow amidst people and the situation arises the other work that the lord has done through you comes back and you say we shall die after all and me. you leave that abatuna ne bagamba e e and the lord and some people Ayo say what? Humble. that person is really humble eno si humble je we call it daily hypocritical this is not humility that is false that is hypocritical eno humility e avamu katonda okunyiga ebiwundu byo this is humility that came from the lord when he announced your wounds kati bodde mo kukisanga mu bulamu when you find such a situation in life no gamba mm. and you say yeah kati tuchireke let us leave that tuchireke let us leave that tune in bere yetu iseme mabigao there is a situation we have gone through way back abantu ne batu ne batu fera and people uh, did condas con condas mm. And the money is in billions. Katinga tuina connections nyingi. We have so many connections. We can go and speak to someone. We can go and speak to someone. Abamune tuogerera dana bo. And some we have spoken to them. Nagamba ah tikisoboka. And they said no this is not what it cannot be. Leo gena gena masoga mukama. But going before the Lord. Naganti oli wako wako janga court yo. And he says when someone takes away your coat t- give them also the tunic When he says accompany me for a mile also add a second one when the lord is bringing such examples and you say what can Wembanga i do gamba, to be as you say uh, beginning to say can i leave these things let us leave them but where will we get all this money to refund the money the ministry the, the money is for the ministry you feel anger coming up again wrath is coming up and also the pain and you say why god some people exist to hurt others ebwe ngenda nchika kanira nchiyingiza but when i am obeying this thing nchi gamba ko omuntu it and talking with about it to some other person omuntu yena ngamba and some person told me nange ebigamba ebyo byajja gendi even me those words came to me but we cannot do that but tubale kabajja chikolo mulala 
And if we leave them, they will do the same to another person. And they are looking for pastors to con. We have to follow them. It is impossible. We need to follow them up. And I also feel, yeah, we have to follow Na them. With time. But with time, we all came to a level saying, Lord, Lord, you are our provider. We are leaving that in your hands. We will trust you. You know how to refund. To repay. To repay. You will repay us and our spirits, our souls will be But you will also pay them that they learn a lesson. And that is called humility. And it's not done for man's sake. And it is techikole muntu. It is done between you and God. But after overcoming the same, it works automatically when you meet people. It works automatically when you meet people. You find someone who has done you wrong, a wrong thing and you say you can go. But you don't do others in the same way. The Lord will strike with something that you will not manage. And then someone will go and say, oh, but this man is so is foolish. Humility is a character. But I, I said there is a character that the Lord has in you. Humility, humility is a is character. A nature. Humility mbala. Humility is a spirit. Let me ask you as I wind up. How many situations in your life would be changed and transformed if only you would humble yourself? Maybe they are between you and your wife and has all husbands. You have bound them in you. And you can even laugh and pretend as though they don't exist. But the moment they come up, you go down. Today. You can humble yourself. I humble myself. You can tell the Lord, and I'm going to depart from my wicked ways. Wicked ways by design. Amakubamacham does not imply that you are bad by your design. But do you remember where we have gone through The person who is the very bad love, one who is very bad love, is the one to whom wicked ways have been imparted. Yes. You feel justified you, to do what you are doing. You feel justified to do what you are doing. There is a woman whom I had with a testimony. In their very home. The home was for a relative and she had grown up from there. But one person in that house raped her. Reporting the head of the family. And the, the girl reported to the head of the family. And the head of the family did nothing. The woman got angry. And she thought, do you think my life is your life? I want to show you. My life belongs to me. And I will do with it what I want. And she began working in sexual immorality of high 
And even when she would find a despised man that is not of her class, she would do it. She would do it. And she decided that I'll be doing all that in this very home. And I will show them that they will also be hurt. I'm doing what I want. She's coming from pain. She's coming from, from being oppressed. And she's putting herself in slavery. Now the devil is using her. She has surrendered her body in things that, that uh, oppress her body. She has put herself in a position where she can acquire any kind of but disease. But she feels justified. But she feels a kiriziwa. They have done already this to me and no one cared. Even here there are people in such a situation. Something was done to you. You sought for help for in vain. And you got angry. And you said, all right. Let me also do it. When they, they talk to you, you say, ah. When I was wounded, who helped me? Those are screws that the, the, the devil puts in us that stop, stops what it us in. from deliverance. Go! We chase demons and we say go and they, they shake, shake themselves and make alarms but they don't go, they stay. In this time when we are seated here, when no one can open your heart to tell you what is in your heart, there is one who knows what is in your heart. When they are not condemning you. But they are saying stop justifying yourself. Stop covering up for yourself. Humble yourself. And you come to me. Even if your sins are as scarlet as the blood. They will become white as wool. But you come. Come and we, 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 we have a council session. Remember, I am your creator. I am the beginner and the, the finisher of your life. I see you. Do you remember when Jesus said, Come to me, you who are weary and heavy laden. I will give you rest. Uh, look after me. Take my yoke because it is not difficult. And you will find rest. Even today there are so many things that if you look in the face of the Lord, you, and you say, Oh Lord, you know me. You know me. Nothing is hidden from you. But today, give me a beginning that I undress myself of this reproach. Isaac told the son Esau after Jacob had stolen the blessing from him. And he cried like, like a young child and said, Oh Lord, don't you have another blessing? Isaac said, When you address yourself of this reproach, you will walk in the blessing. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I also tell you today. When you undress yourself of that reproach that is disturbing you, you will move like one who is blessed. But the Lord is saying, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want us to stand up on our feet. The Bible says that tear out your heart, not your garments. Jeremiah says that just like our sister is, uh, is crying out, also you, may you open up your heart and cry out and tell the Lord today, O Lord. And tell the Lord, I am tired of justifying the wound in my heart. I am tired of pretending to be well off, yet I am just covering. Put your hands in the space. Begin with worship and tell the Lord you are my answer to everything. Lift up that voice. Do not cover anything but lift up your voice and say, Oh Lord, usher me into humility this day. Go on and tear your heart. Tear your heart before him. Father, may your glory be returned to you. We glorify your name and worship you, the beginning of everything. We confess that no one is like you. You are the Lord who heals. You are the Lord who transforms. You are the Lord who redeems. You are the Lord who saves. You save, O Lord. May you arise and your enemies Lord, this day, there are many who are in trouble. They have pain. They have anger. They are in pain. But today, today, sumula mafuta aga kutulich kodi ko. May you release the night in the tents. Sumula mafuta aga tukule oni gajawe migu kuka. May you release the night in that breaks the bondage. Sindi kaba malai kavo iri buli sechi no muwa no muka. Your angels. Every child, your child who is in this place, Lord, may you stretch out your hand and touch them. May you touch them with your hand. Stretch out your hand and do good. Come on and release your soul and. Come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit. Move like a fire over your people in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let there be freedom in the name of Jesus. Let there be release in the name of Jesus. Let there be deliverance in the name of Jesus. Today, let your people go free. Let your people go free. Let us be released and set free from the yoke of the enemy. From the yoke of anger. From the yoke of disappointment. From the yoke of woundedness. From the yoke of all those things that have hit us. And made us captives in the name of Jesus. Come on, 
Hallelujah ni ene moshini likozo poto tolo boko shinda liboli ana bayande liosa Hallelujah Hallelujah kena maso kena maso leten songa yo katonda gamba jangu tutasembi The Lord is saying come and let us jangu tutasembi let us Awala twina biru yeri bazadde bafe Some have pain against our very parents. You are saying my parents did this and that. Today may you pray to your father. Yendere boshika bazabotsala la basanta ramande. Twalo buyiza yanka ndokogera mu mbere yunga ukutula 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 buli mbera ukutule bikoligo. Okutulebi siba byechejo Okutule njigirizi badeze siba Yogera isitani omuga isitani toni nako buyinza Toni nako claim yo na Mudembe yesu ya mfula wa dembe The Lord has made me free and I am free indeed Weyamble kechukwa weyamble kechukwa waluwa sumululwa mukasera kano Andres yourself of the reproach someone is being released waluwa chuba ko mugugo kubadde kuzitowa joli someone is being released of something heavy Cast your burdens unto the Lord cast your burdens unto the Lord Why am igugu jeli mukama Cast your burdens unto the Lord Why am igugu jeli mukama Someone is being freed. Someone is being freed in the name of Jesus. We humble the chiri, we humble the songo. Undress yourself of wrath and his anger. We humble the chiri, no songo wana. Undress yourself of wrath and anger. Mugambe mukama katonda kwe mulokosi wange. Tell him, Lord God, you're my savior. No kwe mwe muri esubiri yange. Kwa 
Kwatabuziba, Elio Matimo, Quetchawa, Kwatabuziba, Kwatabuziba, Mukamawangre, Bembul, every single of Yazimba, every single of your Buchai, every single of your Tasonywa, Bembul, every single, many, many, every single, every single of Yazimba, every two letter of Kamba Petta to Sanywa, every two letter of Kamba Twechawa, Chawana. Yes, we are quiet. What a girl who's a toilet of Quamatima. 
In most cases, I have moved in my own ways. But today, oh Father, you have sent your word to me. Teach me to humble myself. Help me to stop justifying myself. Help me to stop covering up. 
but I may accept that your word works today beginning from this hour I begin a big job may you take away this reproach that I have moved with for a long time May you take away the wrath for those who have done me wrong. Take away from me me justifying myself that I can also do bad. Rejoicing when others are hurting. Help me that I may be your real child. Oh, my Father, may your will be done in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Please take your seat. You may be seated. Um, there are two ways you can go from here. There is beginning a journey of your deliverance to let go the things we, have, we are clung unto. No kwe jamu ebye olerezo nebi nitu ebi justifying and stop justifying the things we have chosen to do by ourselves. Another way is humility. Thank you, brother. And you tell him, Lord, I even don't know how to transform myself. I don't know how to have Forgiveness that is real from the heart. I don't know how to turn away from the things which I think have been justified. But oh Lord, I am humbling myself. Let your will be done. And this is what I say. Take me by the hand, Lord and take me foot by foot. And whenever I am contending with you, may you remind me this that so I that have prayed. I prayer. am brought to that place of true humility. So that I am praise the Lord. And again, take who says that I understand and Kale, I have We are going to pray for this book. That the Lord may use this book to speak to the Mukama that the Lord will use the book as a key to release nations. Hallelujah. Amen. Kati njagalo sabi sale eva mutima guna ngina kusabi sala tu gate wamu e chitabu chino tu chile chile mukama nga chif chige na kuba embaziye. I want you to pray prayer from your heart mm. as I also pray that God will use this book as an axe in His hand. Amen. Amen. Humility is not a common subject. Like I said in the beginning, 
And many people have a very, very narrow understanding of humility. But let us pray that from the beginning of this book that the Lord will broaden the hearts Kale. of people. Stretch your hand. Raise up a prayer from your heart as you push this book and as you push it in the nations and it will bless the hearts of people. Begin to pray, begin to pray. and the finisher of our faith. We thank you for this privilege that we can take this tool which you used your servant to produce before calling him home. Lord, you speak of humility as the key to seeing God. We are praying, dedicating this book into your hands, my Lord. That it's, it's not Stephen Senfuma's book. It is your book. We ask you to spread out your hands and send it to the ends of the earth. As people lay hold of it, may their minds open up. May their understanding open up. May revelation come to their hearts. Father, we pray that impartation of humility shall take place. Right from the children to the adults. Right from the great rulers to the lowest in society. From the wealthiest and richest to the poorest. And from the pastors to the believers. From fathers to children. Lord, use it. Use it. That people will hear your voice as they read it. And Father, that we shall always remember what a gift your servant was through whom you passed this book. We thank you, we bless you, and we return all glory to you. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. I don't think you can come to a conference like this and hear all the different servants of God share on the subject and not take away this book. If only just to say, Lord, I want to acknowledge you. And even to acknowledge your servant through whom you pass this 
material. So I will ask you, even if you're not planning on buying one, talk to God. Ask him, what can I give up? What can I not buy so that I may buy a few books of this? Sister, we Yes, if you can make your stew without onions for three days, you're going to buy more books. Amen. 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 What I mean is, let us sacrifice some other things and and sow a seed believing God that you even if you don't sow in yourself but sow in the lives of other people God is going to bless you I believe the ushers have books around you can see them even right now we can use this opportunity to say can I have a copy sent to me you can raise up your hand and they can give it to you. If you are not prepared, even tomorrow we have And it. online. And even online. I understand the books are on Amazon. I believe online. You can order for it online. To return the glory to God. May the will of bless you. Just clap for him in your honoring God. And let us just take this time to pray for him. Stretch out your hands towards him. And pray what you feel that you want God to do for him. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for our apostle. We thank you, Lord, for you have brought him here. And you packaged him with a word, a transforming word to us and to this generation. We thank you, my dear Heavenly Father, for you have used him to speak to us. Our humble prayer, Lord. Father, you have a plan and purpose for his life. We are praying, O King of glory, that let that purpose, let that plan be fulfilled through his life. Father, I'm praying for your protection upon him. I'm praying for all your blessings. I'm praying for your favor upon him, O oh God. And Father, anoint him enough that you may use him in this generation to change and turn the people's heart to worship, to glorify, and to adore you. And all this we pray through the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.